Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really cool exponential equation. We have 4 to the power x plus 7 all over 7 plus 4 to the power x over 14 equals 68. And guess what we're going to solve for? x, right? What else can we solve for? Now, this is a pretty interesting problem and a very non-standard because if you look at it, even though the bases are the same, the exponents are very different. Or are they? Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now, for problems like these, you should be able to find a way to associate the exponents. For example, if you have something like 4 to the power x and then 4 to the power x plus 1, then this equation can easily be solved, right? For example, suppose this is equal to 20. I can go ahead and write this as 4 to the x plus 4 times 4 to the x because 4 to the power 1 is equal to 4, and then this becomes 20. Now, I can go ahead and either factor 4 to the power x out, or I can call that something and use substitution. Let's go ahead and factor out 4 to the power x. That gives us 1 plus 4 equals 20. 1 plus 4 is equal to 5. If you divide both sides by 5, you get 4 to the power x equals 4, or you just think about it. What times 5 equals 20? The answer is 4. And from here, it's clear that x is equal to 1, right? In a very easy scenario, okay? You probably won't see these kinds of problems on this channel because this channel is about, you know, rigor and maybe some challenging problems at least. If, even if it's not always rigor, it's definitely about competitions, Olympiads, so on and so forth. By the way, I have another channel that focuses on complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out. It's called A plus BI, just like what a complex number is called. So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation and let's find out why this is pretty interesting, okay? So we have 4 to the power x plus 7 over 7 plus 4 to the power x over 14 equals 68. First of all, notice that the exponents are different. Even though they contain x, they are very much different. So how do you do this? Like let's say you have an equation like 4 to the power a plus 4 to the power b equals 68. How do you solve these kinds of equations? Well, first of all, are a and b whole numbers, integers? Are, can they be fractions? Can they be irrational? Those are really good questions. So something to explore, right? But in this case, we're going to focus not on that, but more like finding an association between these exponents. So for that purpose, let's go ahead and split x plus 7 over 7 into two fractions. You can do that because uh, these two terms have a common denominator, and now we can write it as x over 7 plus 7 over 7. x over 7 is x over 7, whatever it is, but 7 over 7 is 1. How does this help? Let's go ahead and plug it in. 4 to the power x over 7 plus 1 plus 4 to the power x over 14 equals 68. This may still look complicated to you, and that's perfectly fine. Don't worry, we're going to simplify it. We're going to do it step by step. So our first step was to take the fraction because the numerator is made up of two terms. We were able to split it up. Now notice that if you had the opposite or the reciprocal, you wouldn't be able to do that. But in that case, you could probably try to flip this turn upside down and then try to do it. But that would be more complicated, probably. Anyways, we were able to do it and we did. Now the next step is to find some type of relationship between the exponents so that we can turn it into an easier equation that is solvable algebraically, synthetically, not just by numerical methods, because that's not my strength and that's not my favorite uh, subject in math either. So here's what we're gonna do. When you have an exponential expression where the exponent is a sum or a difference like this, when suppose you have something like a to the power x plus y, you can write it as a to the x times a to the y. Why? Because we have a rule that says when you multiply two powers with the same base, then you add the exponents, and of course, vice versa, right? You can always reverse the process. That's what we do here. That's why there's an equal, equal sign. Even though we usually read them from left to right, equations are two-sided. Don't forget that. And of course, there's a, a counterpart for division, and that's when the exponents are being subtracted. Of course, addition, uh, subtraction is also addition, depending on how you look at it. So you can always convert them into each other. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can use it in this problem. Notice that x over 7 and 1 are being added. So that just means we can write this as 4 to the power x over 7 
times 4 to the power 1. Do you see what I'm talking about? When you multiply these powers, you're going to add the exponents, and the exponents are added here, so we can reverse it. Make sense? Plus 4 to the power x over 14 equals 68. Awesome. The next step would be to find, again, a relationship. But now it's a little easier. First of all, we have 4 to the power 1, which can be written as 4. So I can write this as 4 times 4 to the power x over 7 plus 4 to the power x over 14. And now it's equal to 68. Now, what's the relationship between x over 7 and x over 14? Well, if you do know that 14 is 2 times 7 or 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7, so hopefully you get to see that x over 7 times 1 half is x over 14. What does this mean? It means this number is half of this number. R make sure you read it correctly, not the other way around. X over 14 obviously is a smaller fraction if x is positive because you're dividing by a larger number, again, if x is positive. Just pay attention to those little details, okay? Those minute details. Now, so what would make sense then take, take the smaller one and call it something. How about calling this u? Okay, great. We can do that. And if this is u, then this will be 2 times u. Why? Because uh, if you multiply both sides by 2 here, you basically get another identity, this one. And since we call this u, this became 2u. And that's really cool. That's something that I've been expecting. So we now have 4 times 4 to the power 2u. If it's your birthday, happy birthday to you. Plus 4 to the power u equals 68. Again, you might be questioning still, and that's perfectly fine. You should all the time. Why is this important? How, why does this matter? Because 4 to the power 2u is basically 4 to the power u squared. Again, another property of powers. If you take a to the x to the y power, you get a to the power xy and vice versa. So we have the ability to separate these powers like this. And now here's the most critical part. Substitution to the rescue. Yay, my favorite method. So now we're going to call this something. How about uh, tea? Okay, tea is my favorite drink. I like coffee too, but maybe once or twice a week. But tea is on a daily basis. Anyways, this is a variable tea, a different one. But every time I see the variable tea, it reminds me the drink tea. Okay, 4 times t squared plus t equals 68. What did we accomplish? Well, if you look at it carefully, you're going to realize we got a quadratic equation. Yay! We can solve it, right? Absolutely. Now, to solve the quadratic equation, we have a beautiful formula. 4t squared plus t equals 68. Now, you can use the quadratic formula. You can try to factor. There's a method called x method. I believe I go over those in one of my videos. If I didn't, I'll make a video about it one day, maybe Monday. So, but here's the thing. If you look at this equation, hopefully you were able to see that it's not too hard to find that t equals 4 works because 4 times 16 is 64. 64 plus 4 is 68. Makes sense? So just by guess and check, t equals 4 is a solution. Awesome. What does that mean? Now let's roll the tape backwards. We have to back substitute. So 4 to the power u is equal to t, but t is equal to 4, which means 4 to the power u is 4 to the power 1, which means u equals 1. Okay? So u is 1. You are not 1. U is 1. And now, you remember that movie? <laughs> okay. You are you and I am me. Whatever. Something like that. So u equals 1, and then u is uh, x over 14. Look at that. So now we can go ahead and replace u with x over 14, set it equal to 1, and you get x equals 14. Nice. Wait a minute. You're talking about a quadratic equation, and does it only have one solution? No, it has two solutions. But how do you find the other solution from this quadratic? Let's go ahead and find out. Okay, I'll show you a really cool way to do it. First of all, write it in a full quadratic form. We now know that t equals 4 is a solution, right? Okay. Great, we checked that. Now, because t equals 4 is a solution, the factor theorem says, hey, if t, is a, uh, t equals 4 is a solution, then t minus 4 must be a factor. And since we know one of the factors, no, no, don't worry, you don't have to do polynomial division. You can just guess and check. I mean, it's not even guess and check. It's like, you know it, come on. 
To get 40 squared, you need 40. And to get negative 48, you need a positive 12. But then are we going to get t from here? Absolutely. Look at this. Wait a minute. Am I missing something here? 4t squared plus... Okay, t equals 4. And I think... I don't know. I, I probably made a mistake somewhere. t equals 4 is a solution. t minus 4 is a factor. This should be... Uh, is it not 40? Oh, it's 68. Never mind. Oh, sorry. I don't know where the 48 comes from. Uh-oh. Okay. That's why it doesn't work. Like, I'm checking like this doesn't work. Okay. It's supposed to be... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, but you'll get to see that I made a mistake because I'm not going to make the cut. So now to get negative 68 from negative 4, we do need a positive 17, don't we? Because their product is going to be. But do you think we're going to get positive t? Yes, because 17t minus 1t is positive 1t. See, it should always work. Okay, don't worry about it. Now, this gives us another factor. Set it equal to 0. You get 4t equals negative 17. t equals negative 17 over 4. Great. But what is t? Again, t is 4 to the power u. So if 4 to the power u is equal to negative 17 over 4, uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. There, you're going to get a complex solution. And you can just do the complex logarithm, so on and so forth. But guess what? This is more like an A plus BI content. Go ahead and check it out to learn more about complex numbers. I'm going to leave this here because this channel is mainly about real numbers. That's the real deal. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.